We are at a new camp spot that I can't pronounce. Angel Princess, take it away. We're at Tequamanon State Park. Tequamanon. The big thing here is the big waterfall, which we're gonna go see today. We're also gonna see some smaller waterfalls. This is a state park campground, and there's several different loops. There's the upper falls and the lower falls, and then there's one close to Lake Superior. So we're at camp spot number 104, and we're at the lower falls. We're at the lower falls. There's the upper falls, the lower falls, and the lower falls are smaller. The upper falls are taller, but the upper falls are one of the largest waterfalls east of the Mississippi. It's, too, I forgot, I'll tell you in a minute. So we are just excited to go do something. We're gonna go on a hike, we're gonna go see a waterfall, we're gonna explore, and I think we're just ready to do something like that. It's been too long. Oh yeah, it's 50, it has a 50 foot drop and it's 200 feet across. It's a pretty big waterfall. Well, you said you thought you could hear it from camp last night. Yeah, you can hear the lower the, the lower waterfalls, which are five, that have an oh. island in the center. So the oh. waterfalls break apart and go around the island. Okay. But many of you have been telling us to come here, so we listen to y'all, mm -hmm. and this is the first place in the UP. Oh, and we're at the UP. And if you're not from Michigan and you don't know what the UP is, it's the Upper Peninsula. We didn't know what the UP, is, UP was, so we're officially Upers, Upers for the, we don't know. We're yeah. going to be here for the remainder of Michigan. We're going to be here moving along. So we're excited. Ready to go? Yeah, let's go check let's out the lowers. Made it to the fall parking lot. It is not very far from the campground. Now this is the lower falls and this is a half a mile hike to the falls and half a mile back. So one mile round trip. Then there's an island with a half a mile loop. So this should be interesting. So just a short walk of a concrete paved path. We're on the first boardwalk viewing area and right here you can see two different falls and we're actually going to walk around the boardwalk so we can see them up close and personal next waterfall is well one of the closest ones is one third of a mile sand and a lot of other materials that were above this waterfall or above the layer of rock and as it eroded away the river eroded away all that it exposed the sandstone that's older than the dinosaurs so this was an ancient sea pretty cool So the river splits apart and goes on either side and we're about to go on this little island in the middle of the river. We are at the end of this loop around the island. Now when we head back, it's just the same thing that we passed on the way up here. Our next excursion is the Upper Falls. So we can drive to it quickly or we can hike four miles one way. So we've decided we're gonna drive to it because four miles one way and back, that's eight miles. We should have done that a long time ago. But Cody said 
there. He was like, come look at this. This is a, how this beaver chewed through this tree. I'm talking about like, look at my hand. Every single tooth mark. It's pretty cool. Yeah. All right, let's head back to the truck and we can see the next set of falls. Now we are walking to the upper falls. There's two different viewing points for the falls. One fourth mile there. So we found the first viewing point and it is, it's pretty big. It's pretty impressive. 50 foot drop, 200 feet across. It's uh, it's pretty big. We did figure out some information about this area. The bark of the hemlock tree is what causes the color of the water. Now they used to use hemlock bark to tan cowhide, but it would take a ton of bark before you could actually get it tan. So that explains the color of the water. What I found out pretty interesting is a lot of the buildings out in the west, the Rockies, Montana, Wyoming, had their wood shipped from here. And what they were shipping back in the 1800s was white pine. And this here is a white pine all the way up. And white pine, uh, it's stated that the bark was used. If you, uh, you would steep the bark, you would use that for wounds, open wound issues and it would help it heal. You'd also steep the needles and make a pine tea that you could drink. And then the last thing was, is that the sap was considered uh, an ailment to arthritis back in the day, all from one tree. It's pretty neat. So why did they ship it to Montana and Wyoming? Well, that's what they were building a lot of the homes and cabins out there with. Uh, okay. They weren't, they weren't cutting just down timber it, out just... there. They were shipping it from here and going out there because it gotcha. was great for building log cabins with. All right, cool made it to the gorge view now you're gonna have to take 181 stairs to be exact all the way down to get the view of the gorge man this is kind of cool reminds me of those arcs in, in arkansas Man, those 181 steps had my heart rate go up just, yeah. just a little. And my butt's still hurting from that workout the other day. Oh. <laughs> I woke up feeling like I got hit by a truck yesterday <laughs> morning before we left the hip camp. Yeah. Uh. We just saw where there is a hemlock tree and we realized we have these at camp by our tent. So this is a hemlock. Yep. And this is a... So it, to me, it looks kind of close to a spruce or or a cedar spruce yeah it's like a mix, mix. Yeah. yeah we finally figured out what's causing all the foam on top of the water it's because the water is extremely soft and then you mix it along with the tannins and then the turbulence from the waterfalls creates the foam so it's perfectly safe it's natural and it's been here forever There is a brew pub over here. It's in the same parking area as the hike to the falls. And they have food, they brew their own beer. So we're gonna go check that out since we're here. So we're cutting this short because we need to get back to camp. We see lightning in 
thunder and I don't think I got everything tied down back at camp. So we need to go back and double check before that hits. Ah, you're always supposed to be prepared, Cody. You're always supposed to have everything tied down. And I don't on this one. Just got back to camp and it is hailing. Like, yeah, but it's small hail. It's like a pea size. We've camped in an Arkansas and it held on us about this size. And this size hell was perfectly fine with our tent. So it didn't destroy anything. It's when you start getting a golf ball size, tennis ball size, then you start running into issues. like it was a short little storm that I never got to tie down what I wanted to tie down which was the edges of the rain fly. I usually like to add cordage on the rain fly right here and pull this out just a hair because for a three season tent that's pretty cool but for a three season tent rain flies are not waterproof they're just they just shed water is all they do. If you were to touch right here and keep something pressed up against the rainfall, it would eventually seep through and get inside your tent, get everything wet. So just make sure when you set up a three season tent, don't put something up against the wall because it's not waterproof. It just sheds water. In warmer weather, it allows the tent to breathe. If you don't have that breathability in a tent, you're going to end up being really hot, stuffy and sweating like crazy at night, even on a cool night. So this is why this breathes to begin with. All right, here comes the harder rain. I was able to get one side of the tent done and more help. Okay, this is officially the largest hell we've ever had our stuff set up in. Look at, look at this. Look at this. That's marble size hell. Okay, my heart's racing a little bit because I don't know, I don't know if this thing can handle this. Well, I hope it I, I mean, it looks like it's, like it's handling it. I mean, we're flooded out. Wow. So Angel Princess here made a really good call. She said, let's come here in case we need to push water off of the awning. I think we had a little bit more than water to worry about. And look at all the fog all of a sudden. This is crazy. My heart started pounding just cause I, I noticed this just kept getting bigger and bigger the whole entire time. 
I'm just worried about the tent. I don't see any holes in the tent. Oh, neither. Whoa. Oh, this is crazy. This is crazy. Looks fine. Okay. To me, it does. I don't know. Okay, this is a first for for us. This is a first, and I am officially cold. <laughs> it's cold now. Yeah, it's freezing. I mean, there is. What do I need to get off? Okay. Here, get me. Okay. really impressed that uh, <laughs> uh yeah, this didn't put a hole through it oh we would have put a hole through the tent before we put a hole through this yeah this uh this material is a little heavier this is actually canvas is what this is made out of i think it's canvas of some sort that started hurting my hands it's like did your hands hurt yeah so as i was holding that one up it was hitting my hand and it hurt. I can't believe our tent's okay. Yeah. Ouch, That's mountain Mary. Wow. Could you imagine if we didn't have these walls up right now? Oh yeah. This would be have been poor. Well we have to stand out here to get the water off of it. Now that the rain came in so heavy and it's starting to rain again, it got extremely cold outside. So we came in the truck to kind of warm up a little. But I want to say something about weather. People have always told us Arkansas has some of the most unpredictable weather. And we've been to other states that try to claim that stake as well. With our travels across this country, we're going to have to give that claim of ownership to Michigan, wouldn't you say? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't even supposed to rain till four o'clock today. And then we saw that little little blip of cloud coming and it said it was just gonna rain for a few minutes and now it's supposed to rain all the way till six and we weren't expecting hell. Kelly looked it up and it stated it had half inch size hell. Half inch size hell is what we just went through. But with the rain starting to come down again, I'm gonna get back out here and try to keep pushing the water off the awning because it's starting to sag. So as long as we don't have hell again, I'm fine. Normally, if I see pea-sized hell falling, I'm okay with it. But I started freaking out because it kept getting bigger and bigger and I was half expecting to start seeing golf ball size, tennis size, softball size hell start falling. And the only thing that was starting to go through my head is how I'm gonna get Kelly through this to safety in the truck or in the trailer with it being fully like looking like that i was concerned that i wouldn't be able to get her in there in time because if it started coming through here like that she could have been hurt not to mention all of our stuff being destroyed gotta gotta keep the angel princess safe y'all she's priceless i tell you what it's still raining no more hill we did have a break in the rain and we both went and showered and it's five o'clock now so i thought let me just go ahead and do dinner since we're here and tonight i'm gonna be making my vegetable it's a vegetable and i call it fusilli because that's the pasta that i'm using but the closest pasta i could find was rotini so we're gonna call it um vegetable rotini <laughs> for tonight but i am still super impressed on how all this held up and all that held i got really nervous that we're gonna have to like somehow get another small tent well what all are you putting in this tonight honey so this we've got some great tomatoes y'all know i love those and we've got a little small zucchini here what we're gonna do is we're gonna put all that in this baking dish and we're gonna roast it in the oven and she's gonna try her cast iron little uh, technique again tonight she said yeah i'm gonna put my cast iron on top again to see if it does well with this 
also have an orange bell pepper. Last but not least, I'm gonna cut up a purple onion. Now I'm mixing this together and then I'm gonna make a little well in the center and I'm gonna put my feta cheese in there. Now we've got some oil. Salt. And of course pepper. I'm gonna go ahead and shove these in there. It's not quite yet 400, but it'll get there in a moment. So I'm gonna go and put those in there. So I'm gonna bake that at 400 for about 20 minutes. I'm gonna check it because you know this oven's tricky. That's why I put this on top to see how it does to regulate the temperature on that. We've got some boiling water here for our noodles. All right, that's gotta boil for 10 minutes. Let me get my timer. So our pasta's done and I'm just checking this. I think it's good though. I think it's okay. First thing you wanna do get the feta in here is this still yeah. get the feta in here first and you want to disperse that evenly now it's time for the veggies hopefully I don't lose any I so need to wash my oven mitts do not judge gosh Kelly that is a dirty so, oven I'm, do not judge I'm telling you right now last time we did laundry I totally forgot to grab it so yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> all right, mix this all up. And we've got one more veggie. It's some arugula. Now, if you don't like arugula, you can use spinach. I mean, you can do what I do. You just make it your own. Do what you want. Do what I do, just not the way I do it. Is that the same? Well, no, it's uh, do as I say, say not, not as, as I, I do. do. Gotcha. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I want a little bit more. So the arugula is going to kind of cook um, as it's rolling around in the pasta. So that's why you want to stir it. It's going to wilt. But it's not going to wilt so much that it loses its crunch. Right. You want it raw. You don't want to cook it and then put it in there. Gotcha. Or you don't want to saute it or, or simmer or whatever. I think that's good. All right. Well, it's not raining. You want to sit out there? We'll mm, see if it's raining. Let's just sit like right here. Okay. Oh, so if it does rain, we have a front row seat. Like well, that. just not because it's, if the wind blows, it comes out of the trees and, you know. She's so smart. It's like it's raining, but it's not. It's the same, but the only difference, you know, man? Exactly, it really is. That looks amazing. Well, it started raining again, but we were able to get dishes clean mm -hmm. and the food. Mwah. Very good. But tomorrow we're going to be leaving here and heading more west on the UP. We're going to call it here and we'll catch you on the other. See ya.